Hey everybody, Edo here, and this Kickstarter basic video for the League of Game Makers is going to focus on marketing. Now, I have to be honest, I was hesitant to do this video. I mean, I've had a number of successful campaigns, but honestly, I don't think of myself as somebody who's particularly good at marketing. I see lots of other groups and lots of other people doing a better job at it, so I was concerned that I didn't necessarily have the best information to share, but after talking with a number of people and getting opinions, Everyone sort of felt that for a basic setup, Kickstarter basic video, that this was, I had way more information than the average person, which I want to share and I will share. But don't consider this advanced. I know that there are a lot of techniques, places, methods that are way better. Again, I've had successful campaigns. I've had, I haven't shot the moon and done 100,000, 500,000 million dollar campaigns. Totally different techniques, but I do hope this video is helpful for somebody who has no idea what they're doing. <laughs> or or maybe you've done one campaign or two, but you know what I mean? So let me just jump right in, right? So you have your game, you're going to do your Kickstarter, and you're thinking about how to spread the word, get the word out, all that kind of stuff. Now, I've already said to you, first thing you need to do is just be part of the community, engage, be looking at Kickstarters, be looking at forums, go to conventions, really dive in, right? That's number one, but that doesn't really have anything to do with when you're ready to start sort of marketing, right? So before you get to where you're gonna spend money, how you're gonna spend it, there are a couple key, critical, amazingly important things you have to do first. So important, they're just fundamentals, right? So first, you need to think about and understand that nugget of fun, nugget of appeal, what about your game is compelling? What makes it special? What's the elevator pitch, right? How can you distill that core fun, that core coolness, that fun factor, whatever language you want to use, how can you put it into a blurb, into a sentence, into two sentences, something that could fit on an ad or under your Kickstarter page, right? That is critical. Virality and marketing has comes down to the um, smallest digestible piece of your product. They're not going to play it, right? They're not playing it. They're not necessarily in a marketing thing looking at, you know, a 20 minute video. It comes down to how you communicate the idea of your game. And there could be re some really good ones. You could have something that talks to the art of the game. You can have something that talks to the fun of the game. You can have something that talks to the audience of the game, right? It doesn't have to be one thing, but you really need to think about those key things. And it's super, super important, right? There's the text version of that, but then there's also an image. Image is easier to digest than text, right? Image speaks a thousand, photo speaks a thousand words, whatever. When you're using viral campaigns, Twitter, marketing, BGG ads, anything, you know, most things, you're gonna wanna lead with an image, you're gonna wanna have an image, and you can have the text on the image, but that image is critically important. So what image of your game really speaks to the game, shows off to the game? Something hugely valuable to your campaign is to have really photogenic games, right? Something that photos really well is magical. And um, that's why you might want to do a piece of cover art. That's my, why you might want to do some component pieces, whatever. Being able to show a picture of your game goes a long way, okay? But let's say, perhaps, it's very prototypey, or you don't have a good artist, or it just, it looks like everything else. I don't know, but you don't have something terribly photogenic. Okay? If you don't, I will give you the three P's. People, place, pets, right? Those are the things you can add to your game to make it more compelling in an image, right? So if your game doesn't look that good, okay, show it with people who are having fun playing it. That look good, right? They're they're jazzed, they're having fun, they're smiling, who cares what's in their hand, right? Like, <laughs> by adding people, it suddenly um, feels more, you can connect with the people, you might know the people, you might know the, you know, the you could see the, the audience, think about your audience there, right? All that things that's really important. So, then you have place. Okay, so perhaps, you know, you, you people you have, you don't have, but you wanna get some extra footage, doing it um, at a nice table, laid out nicely, perhaps at a convention, um, at a famous location, whatever, adding that place to the, to, to the picture can help make it more compelling. A game under a majestic sunrise is still cool, right? I mean, you gotta get the lighting right, but whatever, right? So, place, and all else fails, 
put the cat in the box, right? Like you, if, if the image is at least makes the person smile, they'll associate the game with a smile, right? Like this is marketing stuff. I'm not espousing that you don't design a great game, but you have a great game and you're trying to connect with people. And people connect with people, places connect with people, and pets connect, connect with people. In particular, eyeballs. Having eyes on, on an image, whether, and they don't have to be the people's eyes. They can be the character eyes on the, on the, on the cards, right? But that your your like your your DNA is trained to associate facial features, right? That's how we like see a tiger in the woods or connect with our babies, right? They're like really fundamental to who humans are, and you're leveraging that in marketing, right? So um, those are great ways to to leverage that. And then sometimes you might have something that's really special. Lift off those alien eagles was really special. They were really special because I could tell unique stories with those characters in imagery, right? No other games have ever done it like that, that, that the Alien Eepos did. They were incredible, incredible. Anyone who's around when that campaign happened, um, the simplicity of the character faces on the Alien Eepos and then their ability to be positioned in such a way to create stories and when other people create stories was really a big hit for that title. So. That is talking about your text, your blurb, talking about your images, right? The other thing that's a fundamental from the beginning is know your audience. This is so important. Who are you making this game for? Who do you want to buy the game? Who's going to play it, right? Where do they go? Where do they consume their content, right? A family game, parents, perhaps it's a role-playing game with lots of storytelling, perhaps it's really uh, you know, a miniature focused title. All of these different types of people sort of congregate in different places. And maybe they all congregate on Board Game Geek, except for possibly the family and, and, and some other you know, broader groups. But um, even within a, a, a network, there may be specific fan community pages, there may be specific websites, there may be specific forums. You want to dial into that, and hopefully you understand that. So spend some time thinking about that and thinking about who those groups are. Now, maybe you have a game in a certain audience, but you don't know where they congregate. Well, go find campaigns that reflect the type of game you're making. Read the pages, read all the updates, and tell. look at where they're posting reviews and articles. Just look at where those people are. You know, hunt them down. Find out who and where they, they live and that's gonna help you immensely, especially when we get to spending money and that kind of thing. So again, know what's good about your game, know what's fun, know where the appeal in your game is. If you don't know, ask somebody to tell you, like somebody who's like, I love that game. Why? Why do you love that game? I send a message to every single person who backs every single one of my Kickstarters and I ask them that exact question. What grabbed you? Why did it, what drew you into the title? Over the course of campaign, as I find that information, I then use it to do new material, reach out to new people, think about it differently than I might have because I don't always know, okay? So, you have those two pieces of information, super critical. Now, the meat and potatoes. Do I have to spend money? Am I gonna spend money? Blah, 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 right? Ultimately, I am confident you can have a successful Kickstarter without spending any money on marketing or any of that stuff. I really think you can have a genuine product that's really fantastic, gets word of mouth, and is successful, and maybe it's recognized by Kickstarter and all these different things. I believe in that. I really do. I really do. But if you're gonna spend some money, you can certainly try to help that situation. And the biggest question you're gonna ask yourself, the, the first one I think in terms of am I spending or not spending is, am I gonna buy the 30 days of Board Game Geek ads and the last day, my, my final day of my campaign, front page, that's $750. $500 for the 30 days, $250 for that last day. Are you willing to spend $750 on marketing? And is that Board Game Geek the right audience? Um, so far, I have done it. I am starting to debate a little bit the return there compared to other things, but I think that really still stands as a, a, a measure you got to think about. So... Um, whether it's right or wrong to you is whether or not your what your budget is. If your budget is only five hundred dollars, it's not the right choice. If your budget is only seven hundred and fifty dollars, it's not the right choice. I think, unless you're starting at a willingness to spend a thousand dollars on marketing, 
then you should walk away from that. If if you are going to spend thousand, fifteen hundred bucks, which is no small amount of money, right? I mean, most of us are broke going into these things, so it's no small amount of money. So if you can't afford that, don't worry about it. I mean, like go do other ways of of getting people excited. But if you think you can, if you if you, if you budgeted, you have that set aside, you came from another time, whatever, think about that. Then after that, there are just a there are myriad other options, a plethora even, that you could go through. And whether it's boardgaming.com or um, board game links or various um, like, you know, uh, club fantas uh, uh, fantasy or the, uh, um, I mean, they're all over the place. All of these different uh, um, uh, Meeple Mechanic or Badger, uh, uh, the Badger page, whether you want to go into like different smaller network websites. Everyone is willing to sell you a part of their website for 50 bucks, 25 bucks. And you're going to get a good deal on that. Somebody was like, oh, hey, Cardboard Republic, you can be on our... I, I, I'm, 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 these may not be accurate names and numbers, and I'm just naming things that are popping into my head. Um, but, but everyone's going to be willing to have a $25 month of square... 720 by 250, you know, 769 by 327 ad over here. And the reality is, this is where that audience piece comes into mind. Because if you know your audience and you know the websites, the content that they're absorbing, doing those smaller bets can be fantastic. If you're just throwing out money to throw out money, the best you're going to do is sort of get that awareness thing. But I don't know that you're going to get that much. Kick Track's another one that has a decent volume, right? But, you know, you get almost as much from Kick Track by submitting articles for them to post on their page, right? So you should also look at how you might be able to get some things for, for free um, as opposed to necessarily paying it. But those are the types of places. The next thing in that sort of paid category is, and so oh, and on those ads, there are like four or five different ad dimensions you're gonna to have to deal with. Most of them have the banner, most of them have the vertical banner, and they have a square. There's like four or five. You need to you need to budget yourself to make those, and then you'll you'll use those in, in press releases or use those in um, um, your 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 uh, you know like newsletters and things like that. So you you will need your graphic designer, your artist to make those. Um, the next thing you can think about is paid reviews. Uh, there are a number of reviewers who take paid reviews and also do page marketing and other things. And they don't call them reviews. They're oftentimes previews. Sometimes they're marketing. But they usually sometimes come with your, they're doing the review, but you're paying for the marketing. You're paying for the ads on the site. Or sometimes they only do it for the review. Um, those are options. You know, marketing through reviews is valuable. Sometimes it's hard to get in front of people. I'm not somebody who has any problem with the idea of paying money for a review. But you got to assume that room is going to be that review is going to be impartial, right? That's the right word. That it's good. They're going to do their job on the review side. The marketing, the spend in your mind is either you can't find a reviewer for one reason or another, or you think of it as the size of their audience and you're getting access to their audience. But that's another place where you're going to end up considering and spending money. So you should certainly keep it in mind. Okay. Two two last pieces I want to talk about in this puzzle. So there's paid marketing and advertisement, right? That's most of what I've just been talking about. This is that image, that um, text, that blurb pushed to users, pushed to people on websites, Facebook and Twitter. You can also do campaigns there. You can do campaigns and boosts on your page. Also well worth considering if you know what your audience is and you know who you're targeting on Facebook or with Twitter. But essentially what you're trying to do is get them to click the, click the button click through the ad, right? And when they click, that doesn't mean they're gonna back. So something you really need to think about on that kind of ad is not only click-through rate, but install, which in this case would be backing. And that's really important because you could have an ad, you know, you could have an ad of one of your characters in some pose that gets everyone to come through, but then you, they see your game as an abstract um, strategy game for kids, I don't know. And, and there's no connection between your advertisement and the game. You really need that nugget to flow straight through. So you're, you're hitting somebody who's your target audience with an ad that appeals to them that is evocative in a true and honest way of your page. If you just trick people and get them through, you're just wasting your money. 
I'm not, you know, this isn't clicking a free downloadable game, right? This isn't like, oh, okay, I'll install and see what happens and maybe you hook me later. You're asking me to give you 40, 50, 60 bucks, 20 bucks, right? You're not going to trick me with some ad. I'll get to the page. Maybe you can trick me. If the whole page is a trick, <laughs> maybe you trick me. But you to bring that kind of click-through marketing, you got to nail the audience, the hook, and deliver. You got to deliver. Because if you don't, you're just wasting your money. You'd be better spent doing it in other places. Okay. Um, then there's something else entirely. And this is what I'll call social engagement marketing, right? And this is creating content which drives user behavior, drives engagements, creates excitement, right? This is uh, contests that you can run by having games that you can put up and there are a number of groups that will um, do a contest for you. BGG has a paid for contest, but there are a lot of other sites that are willing to do free contests for you and they know how to drive engagement. So that's another way to do it. As are things that, um, you know, uh, come up with a quote for this character or ads that pose questions, ads that don't feel like ads, but include your game. Like, for example, with Heroes and Tricks, uh, which just wrapped on Kickstarter, I, leading up to the campaign, was showing off the art from the game and asking people, which is inspired by gamer types, and asking a question about that gamer type. Who knows an alpha? What's the funniest thing a, a Gabby ever did or whatever? And the part there wasn't to, sh you don't want people to feel like show. People, an advertisement, people see it and they know it's an ad. No one shares an ad unless they're super excited about the game, right? People don't just share ads. The only reason they share out is to support the, either they're super, super excited already or to support the, the backer because they know you. People do social engagement because they're interested, they're engaged, pose a question. Uh, there's a big, big um, literature around people tending not to agree but very much willing to disagree. So sometimes posing statements that people are gonna disagree with can also create some engagement, some loops, some discussion, right? So this mid category is where a lot of people without money can go to have a successful campaign. But again, you wanna do things like the, you know, the liftoff contest where I had people um, at, at Gen Con, I had people get a little meeple and it was a contest where they had to put in a picture and share it. It was both viral and it took, it leveraged this photogenic piece and it was a great marriage, right? So thinking about how you can bring those things together and how you can turn and use your content to engage discussion and sharing. So that's this middle piece. Most important piece out of all of it is word of mouth. Word of mouth typically comes from genuine excitement, genuine engagement, genuine connections with people who are looking for it, engaging and backing your project. So those types of things, money can't buy. What buys that is engaging those people, them getting excited and using your page. And it is so valuable and you can inspire it. You can, in your Kickstarter updates, push people to do it. Um, and some of them will, but that's, that is the most valuable. You can do Kickstarter pages, pages with that sharing thing and the social unlocks and those work to a degree, but they sort of start feeling like paid marketing ads. It's nothing compares to tag friend's name, hey Joe, check out this game, you'll love it, right? That's what you want, that's what you want. Um, and so you're gonna look at that um, and try to, try to connect it. Now I'm not talking about necessarily how to do updates on your campaign, how to do the social things during your campaign, that's up. You know, there are other things I'm not getting into and I'm, this, I'm trying to keep these videos a little shorter and a little faster, but so. Um, so certainly also, again, having reviews. I did a whole thing on getting game reviews. That all gives some social connection. Um, also, you may want to do a Reddit AMA. Now, you're going to do a Reddit AMA typically during your campaign. Ask me anything. But Reddit, uh, you need to do the 90-10 or the 80-20 rule. You need to contribute 90% for 10% of shill, right? So if you're going to use the, and it's true for everything, but Reddit, it's really true, is if you're going to want to promote on sites, you have to be active there. Unless you're doing advertisement, then they you know, then it's expected. Um, you don't have money, you're not marketing, you're not internet savvy, whatever. Look, be part of the community. Go to cons. Show your game off with cons. Play it with people. Go to your local game store. Go to your local, local game store. Go on a trip from game store to game store to game store playing your game, right? A Kickstarter for almost any beginning Kickstarter, unless you're doing some incredible crazy reach out, is like a small thing. I, let me say this correctly. You probably need 400 or 500 backers. 
over a 30-day period, right? Let's say it's 600 backers, right? Get this right? That's 20 backers a day for 30 days, right? Is that 600? I think that's 600. 20 people a day, that's not 20,000, that's 20 people, right? And perhaps you, you, you know, you know, you, you have a big spike on the first day and then it's 15 people a day. 15 people a day, that, you can grind that out. You can reach out to people and connect with them. You can have those conversations. You can go to the conventions and play. You can go to the game store. The people recognize that. People recognize when somebody's getting it. They're going for it. They want it. It means something to them. People respond to that. So that is really how you do it if you don't have a budget. Boots on the ground, grassroots, go, 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 go. And you can be creative or not, but there, there's this level that doing the work does get it done. Man, sometimes it doesn't, right? I'm sure there's plenty of people going to be like, I did that, and, right? There has to be some baseline game and appeal there, right? Because marketing and advertisement is just that. They're pointing at that product. But I, I really felt with Liftoff, a lot of that greatness came from my efforts, my communicating, my grinding it out, combined with all these other things and a, a product that was compelling and all that stuff, right? So know what's the appealing about your game. Know your fun figure out how to communicate that, and then know who you're communicated to, and then filter your money and your time to connect those, those people. And I think you'll be successful. So hopefully that was a great basis for, or basics for marketing. There's many more people who are supremely excellent at this stuff. And, I, and, and perhaps maybe they'll, they'll send me some notes and give me some feedback. So subscribe, share all that good stuff. Great, best of luck, all that wonderful, wonderful stuff. Okay, thanks.